Hey everyone, welcome to NFI Hammer, where I, a beginner in the miniature painting hobby, explore everything Warhammer and miniature painting related. In this video, I will show you this very easy jungle base that doesn't require any expensive materials and only three paints. If you want to see how I pull it off, or <laughs> if I do pull it off at all, stick around. Alright, let's get started. If you're new to the channel, firstly, welcome. It's great having you here. Secondly, I'm a beginner that have been in the hobby for just over a year now. So I don't know if that makes me a beginner or an intermediate, but one thing that I've really struggled with is basing. Like the painting, I can kind of wrap my head around and, you know, I'm following the box art, so it doesn't require a lot of creativity. Um, there's a bit of a recipe to it. Whereas with basing, it's much more free you know, form, uh, off the books kind of thing. So I have experimented with basing quite a bit. Um, I bought that expensive basing kit that you saw before for $15, which was the most expensive bag of sand I have ever bought. Um, and I used that to kind of base my model of the month, um, just because there's not really any like theme to them. Um, some are like Age of Sigma models, some are you know, um, factions that I don't collect and stuff. But for my Necrons, I've been really trying to channel like an alien moon base. And so with that, I paint, you know, um, storm vermin fur gray color over it and put some alien grass tufts on it. And recently I've been doing Martian iron crust. So I've done a whole different video about alien moon bases. So I feel pretty comfortable with those. So with my Tyranid army, I didn't want to do a moon base. To me, these are like, you know, bugs from outer space. And I think landing in a jungle and having them swarm you would be much more terrifying. So I have this oregano leaves or oregano, depending on your pronunciation, and some red dirt that I have from a holiday that I went on. And it's just soil, nothing fancy. I did put it in an oven for like 150 degrees uh, for a couple of hours just to kind of kill any organic matter, uh, which is a bit weird because I'm adding oregano <laughs> to it. Um, so, but I think when it comes from a factory, it's treated and stuff. I'm not quite sure how <laughs> true that is, but I'm just trying to give it a bit of a mix so that there's like an equal balance, roughly 50-50 of like plant life and uh, soil. And so here are my tyranids and my idea is to kind of cut the bases off so it's nice flat surface so that I can glue um, them on. So I'm just kind of popping them out of their socket and then I'm cutting the little weird hexagonal shape off. This is as I said before, I'm a complete beginner in the hobby, and this is actually one step here that I wish I'd done differently. What I should have done um, is actually cut the Tyranid off from the base using a scalpel, rather than trying to just um, separate out the little peg thing here. And what that would have allowed me to do is... Um, yeah, basically glue around that decoration that hasn't been painted and then paint the whole thing. Anyway, it'll make more sense later, but yeah. Um, usually you don't have to worry about this and I guess the reason why I didn't think about this was because most of the models that I've painted don't come with any base decoration. So it wasn't really something I'm super used to. But anyway, I digress. Um, <laughs> so basically I've got some PVA glue that I water down and then I just dip uh, the base into the PVA glue and then I dip it into the soil mixture. And then I just try and wipe off any excess around the rim. And I kind of clumped it on maybe a bit too thick at the beginning. In hindsight, maybe like a little um, less texture would be good but it's really just up to your own personal preference about how thick you'd like it. I realize that I've kind of got the um, layout here, it's a bit hard, so I've just rearranged it a little bit to uh, make it a little bit easier. So it goes from 
unpainted base to into the um, PVA glue into the soil onto the left hand side and that made it a lot easier. So definitely want to set your workspace up um, so that it's convenient for you. And so here I've just got a watered down mixture and I'm just kind of glazing the top of these just to kind of create a bit of a seal over the top and so that any loose leafage and soil doesn't kind of fall off. So this is kind of good how they look already like I'm sure if you're you know didn't want to progress any further you could probably just stop here but I wanted to prime it with my flat gray primer just to create a really good seal. I was kind of paranoid that the organic matter might go moldy or just weird smelling over time um, so I really wanted to kind of completely cover it so I'm just doing like two thin coats. I probably did a bit too thick actually if I'm being <laughs> brutally honest with myself over the top of these bases. Um, and I was a bit worried that I might lose some of the texture and some of the details um, because I did put it on so thick. But after it dried, it looks like this. And I was actually really impressed with how it turned out. Like it has a lot of interesting detail, but you can still kind of make out little leaves and little twigs as well as like the soil clumps. So I was really um, happy with it and now it's like really sealed well on top so nothing's really falling off. So the first of the uh, three colors that you'll need is a Rhinox hide or any sort of dark brown color. I really like this one it's very kind of almost black brown but it's definitely got those earthy tones and you really want to water it down as much as you can. Obviously don't overdo it but you want it to be very liquidy so that it can kind of fall inside the cracks and crevices of the base. This step did take a little bit longer than I was expecting um, just to get that full coverage and I'm painting 11 bases here so if you're doing um, a smaller amount obviously it'd be a lot easier and if you're doing more it takes a little bit longer. But it's kind of a relaxing step here. Uh, also you kind of want to make sure that you get it uh, as close as possible to the rim edges. It doesn't matter if you go over, as you see I'm going over because we're going to come back later and tidy them up. Um, but yeah you don't really want any kind of gaps there because it kind of ruins the illusion of the base and then the rim. You kind of want it to be a seamless transition. So I also was just trying to paint them on the table here which was kind of a bit dumb of me because they were just sliding all over the place. So eventually I just got a blue tack and one of the paint cans or jars and just used that as a holder. I know people in the comments below have told me to buy a paint holder and it's definitely something I want to do. So yeah, as I was saying before, uh, you know, because I haven't cut the Tyranid off from the decoration at the base, it doesn't really join on now that the surface isn't flat. So in hindsight, I should have done this at the very beginning, um, but that's why I'm a beginner. Um, so you can learn from my mistake and you can cut the Tyranid off from the, the base rather than cutting the little peg off. Uh, but what I ended up doing was it was a bit difficult because it I got a really sharp blade that I hadn't used before and I was just trying to get a very clean cut from the leg so I didn't want to break the model after I'd done all that effort of painting it. If you've got a good idea on how to do this please let me know in the comments down below um, because it, this was a very time consuming and delicate step. I felt like I was doing surgery on it. But eventually I did get it loose um, and the reason why I've got some white foam on the table is because I didn't want to cut <laughs> into my table. But that should make gluing it a lot easier. So now that I've got all the pieces cut off and I've got all the spare decorations here that I can use for other models down the track, um, it's ready to start the 
two different colors on top. So this is Warpstone Glow, so this is color number two. And I have a lot of Necrons, if you follow my channel, um, please do if you don't. Um, you can tell I do a lot of Necrons, so this is one of the green colors I use. But really any green would do, uh, there's probably a lot better greens, like any sort of foresty green would probably be even better. But I've only got two greens to work with. And I've just loaded it up onto my dry brush and I'm just very gently kind of just randomly picking out areas to kind of highlight. But the great thing is that earthy brown and the um, dark green really kind of meld together to really create that forest effect really easily. Um, it's quite surprised actually how much it brings it together because before I had put any green on it kind of looked a bit like bitumen or just kind of I don't know messy brown but just a couple of highlights of green really makes it pop so applying that to all of the 11 really didn't take much time at all like from now it's pretty straightforward and then for the gauze energy in my necrons I have this moot green color which is kind of just like a base color of tesseract glow and I'm using the smaller end of the dry brush in this case it's a makeup brush I stole from my wife and I'm just really picking out just a few delicate edges um, to bring that lighter color to because it is quite bright. Uh, you don't want to overdo it and make it too green. You still kind of want it to be soil and mud and dirt, but you just want a bit of like moss and algae that's kind of growing in the soil. So this is like where you can be creative and you can you know, really come up with different patterns. And they're the three colors that basically is all you need. You need the Rhinox hide for the brown, you need the Warpstone Glow or a different forest green, um, and then you just need a light green, in this case, moot green. And you could definitely get some Agrax Earth Shade and put that over the top of these so that some of the recesses get darkened and then maybe even go over with a dry brush again. But honestly, I'm not going to bother. I'm just going to keep these really, really simple for now. And I'm just going to just do these three basic colors. One thing that I really think is important with basing is to just make sure the rims are all one color. It really frames the model um, and frames the base by having the rims painted. So I definitely recommend it. When I first started, I didn't really bother too much. And so technically this is a fourth color because I'm using a bad and black. So feel free to sue me in the comments. But I also think that you could just use Rhinox Hide. You could use any of the two green colors and it would still look good but I'm a sucker for just the black original one. So once all the bases have been painted, it's time to grab some super glue. And you can't see it now, but off camera, my hand is covered in super glue. So I'm using my right hand as I, my other hand is completely out of action to kind of glue this. So that's why it looks a little bit more awkward than usual. Though I think most of my videos are pretty awkward if you haven't been able to tell by now. But this one especially so. So here this is where you can use like your creativity. And you know use different poses. So you know if you had 20 of these guys like two sets. I think definitely want to cut them off the uh, basing material at the beginning. Just so that you can pose them in more unique ways. Uh, but I only have one set of these so it didn't really matter too much. But I do like being able to kind of put them in an angle that you want, putting them in the direction that you want, I think makes it a little bit more unique and your own. And already I'm kind of seeing it all kind of come together and I was getting kind of excited at this point that I was actually going to pull this jungle base off. The natural colors really help the model pop off and look quite good. The camera actually doesn't give it justice, it does look better in real life. I think um, the lighting isn't probably the best in here, but yeah, I was really happy with just like three colors turning it into something, you know, that looks quite realistic. 
you know, here's an example termagant that I have that I have in base, and you can really see like the differences night and day between them. I do have these ones, I had two that I kept the base decoration because it's a bit too hard to cut off and there's a big gap between the base decoration and the base so I'm going to have to come back and try and fix that up. So I wanted to add some foliage so I've got this laser cut grass that I got for half price which I've been really looking for an opportunity to try out. So yeah, the next steps are kind of big fail steps. So there's probably a good lesson in what not to do, uh, but it's probably worth sharing this knowledge with other beginners so that you don't repeat my mistakes. I was quite surprised by this laser cut grass with how small it is for seven dollar dues for this, and that's half price. Uh, you know, I was quite surprise it's just one sheet I kind of expected multiple sheets even though the packet does clearly say one sheet only I just can't wrap my head around how a little bit of you know paper basically or origami can be that expensive however it is quite tough like you can um, feel the quality in it so I'm trying to manipulate it into a plant shape but I'll fast forward this because it's a bit painful uh, and it would probably be easier to have some tweezers, but I couldn't find any in the house, so I just had to do make do with my hands. I'm realizing at this point that probably this is not the best size base to put such a big, you know, um, foliage on. Like, it probably would be better with my winged Tyranid Prime because I have a big, nice base. Uh, and this is just like a little baby infantry unit, even though this is the leader of the Neurogaunt, so his base is a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm just trying to put some super glue and try and find somewhere to put it. But uh, yeah, I guess that's a good learning lesson for any beginners like me out there is um, make sure that your decoration is proportionate to the size of the base. Uh, it looks a little bit bare still on the other side, so I have some static grass. I did a whole video about static grass and how I'm not a massive fan, but I did want to try and get rid of it or at least find a use for it. Part of my thinking was like to buy the 8mm grass because it was the same price as the 2mm grass and I was such an idiot uh, I didn't realize you get the same weight of grass anyway so you don't really miss out it's really just the length of the grass that's different so my cat Luna has come to check on how my progress is going she kind of leaves me alone now when I'm doing miniature painting, but I think all the smells and uh, excitement of <laughs> the basing that has caught her attention. So with the cat leaving me alone, I'm just putting some PVA glue onto the base and then trying to sprinkle some of the eight millimeter grass that I've cut into smaller chunks. I'm trying to give the illusion of like moss or kind of like just um, very small plant life. However, what I didn't factor in is when I'm picking it up off the paper towel, I'm kind of only picking up the big chunks. So all that cutting was kind of completely pointless because the small parts are left on the paper towel. If you've got any idea on how to like um, resize or repurpose static grass into smaller lengths let me know in the comments down below because yeah obviously I'm making a big mess of this however I'm using my normal technique which is just to get a clump of static grass and just putting it all on and that way it's kind of pointed up which is what I wanted and then I'm going to get some scissors and kind of trim the tuft in half so it's less tall and then I'm just going back to my alien neon grass tufts I really love these guys it's about a thousand and one percent easier than using static grass without a static grass applicator so 
together these were really easy so now with the different foliage it's kind of looking a little bit more diverse uh, the great thing about jungles are they are really diverse biomes so you can kind of go crazy again the bases are so small it's kind of hard to have multiple uh, different things on them so these two models here are the ones that had the extra bit of base decoration and you can see that there's a gap between the base and the decoration. So I've just got some PVA glue here and I'm just trying to fill in those gaps. This way it'll kind of blend more so it looks like, you know, these things are protruding from the earth rather than just kind of like hovering in air, thin air above it. And then I've got some sand that I'm trying to fill in to those gaps so that it hardens. And then I'll go over it again with Rhinox Hide just to blend it in fully. The only thing missing was that, you know, there's more than just, you know, plants in a jungle. So I went out into my garden and I found these little bits of wood and I just thought that they would help create you know the appearance of like a fallen tree branch or a fallen log and just uh, put some PVA glue to secure them. So this is the final product. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out. Obviously this isn't professional and it's not going to win any you know golden dragon type awards um, but I was really happy with it. It didn't take a lot of time and that you know all the materials were free only use three paints. I did use some laser cut grass and some grass tufts so you know if you have them lying around that's great but you know it's not really necessary to create this effect. Anyway thanks for watching I hope you had a great time. If you made it this far please consider leaving a like and subscribe. It really helps the channel out. Anyway until next time see you later bye.